Welcome to a lesson on the stars and bars method of counting, as well as the principle of inclusion and exclusion. How many meals can you buy with $10 if there are seven dollar menu items if A, you can skip items, B, you buy at least one of every item, C, you don't get more than two of any items? Beginning with part A, because you have $10, we can think of this as having 10 indistinguishable $1 bills, and therefore we have 10 stars, and because there are seven dollar menu items, or because there are seven distinguishable menu items, we have six bars. Remember, the number of bars is always one less than the number of distinguishable items. And this is because each bar indicates a switch from one item to the next. So for the menu items, we'll refer to them as items one through seven. Any string we form with 10 stars and six bars represents a possible meal for part A. Let's look at one example. So beginning with item number one, because we have a star, you purchase one number one, then we have a bar indicating switching from item one to item two, and then three stars, which indicates you purchased three number twos. Another bar indicates switching to item number three. The next star indicates you buy one number three. The next bar indicates switching to number four. Then there's a star, you buy one number four. Another bar indicates switching to number five. And then two stars, indicating you buy two number fives. The next bar indicates switching to number six. You buy one number six because of the star. The next bar indicates switching to number seven. The last star indicates you buy one number seven. So all the different strings of length 16 that can be formed with 10 stars and six bars gives a possible meal for part A. And therefore the number of meals is equal to the sum of the stars and bars, choose a number of bars, which is 16, choose six meals. So for part A, there are 16 choose six or 8,008 possible meals. For part B, you buy at least one of every item. So if you buy at least one of every item, then you have to remove seven dollars or seven stars, leaving three stars and six bars. The number of possible strings with three stars and six bars will give the number of possible meals for part B, meaning how many meals when you buy at least one of every item. So let's look at one possible stars and bars chart below. Again, we assume you've already purchased one of every item. So this first star indicates you buy another at number one. The next three bars indicate three switches. And therefore you switch from item one to item two, item two to item three, item three to item four. And then there's a star indicating you buy one number four, followed by two switches, which means switching from item four to five and then five to six. And the next star indicates you purchase another number six. And then we're done because we're out of stars. So in this case, you purchased one of every item and then an extra number one, an extra number four, and an extra number six. So all the possible strings that can be formed with three stars and six bars is nine choose six. So for part B, there are nine choose six possible meals or 84 possible meals. And now let's talk about C, which is more involved. For part C, you don't get more than two of any items. For part C, we need to use the principle of inclusion exclusion. We need to subtract the outcomes that have at least three repetitions of the same item from the number of meals with no restrictions. We know from A, there are 16 choose six meals with no restrictions. We start by subtracting all the possible ways in which at least one item can be purchased at least three times. If one item is purchased three times, we lose three dollars or three stars, and therefore we're down to seven stars and six bars. So the number of ways in which at least one item can be purchased at least three times is seven choose one times 13 choose six. The red combination seven choose one is the number of ways that we can choose one item of the seven to be purchased three times, and the blue combination 13 choose six is the number of meals with seven dollars and seven menu items, again because we have seven stars and six bars. However, the above result subtracts too many things. It does not differentiate among scenarios where two or more items are purchased at least three times. We need to add the possible ways at least two items can be purchased at least three times. So if we purchase two items three times, we lose six dollars or six stars, and we're down to four stars and six bars. So the number of, so the number of ways at least two items can be purchased at least three times is seven choose two times 10 choose six. 
The red seven choose two is the number of ways to choose two of the seven items to be purchased three times. And the blue combination, 10 choose six, is the number of meals with four dollars and seven menu items. But now we're counting too many things and therefore we need to subtract all the possible ways in which three items can be purchased at least three times. So if we purchase three items three times, we lose nine dollars or nine stars, and now we're down to one star and six bars. The number of ways in which three items are purchased at least three times is seven choose three times seven choose six. Where the red seven choose three is the number of ways we can choose three of these seven items to be purchased three times, and the blue combination, seven choose six, represents the number of meals with one dollar and seven menu items. And now we're done. It's not possible to purchase at least four items three times because four times three is twelve or twelve dollars and you only have ten dollars. So the final result is below. We have sixteen choose six minus the product of seven choose one and thirteen choose six plus the product of seven choose two and ten choose six minus the product of seven choose three and seven choose six, which is 161 possible meals. I hope you found this helpful.